applications and successful mobile apps tend to be visual. They tend to have great aesthetics. And so it's important that we learn how to work with images in our .NET MAUI apps. .NET MAUI supports various formats. The most popular, of course, are gonna be JPEGs and PNGs. You wanna use a PNG if there's anything that you want to have transparent. And then you can also use vector graphics saved in an SVG or scalable vector graphic format. By the way, uh, the scalable vector graphic will convert to a PNG inside of .NET MAUI. File names must be all lowercase. That's an Android requirement. And they have to start and end with a letter. They can contain letters, numbers, and underscores, but no spaces, no other special characters. And to add your picture to your project, you wanna to go to the resources folder, open up the images folder, right click on the images folder and choose add existing files and then go find your file and import those in. You wanna make sure that the build action in the properties for each image is set to Maui image. In most cases, Visual Studio is gonna do that for you, but always double check that. And be careful not to distort your images. There's nothing worse than seeing somebody either elongated or fattened because the proportions were not maintained. That's true both in creating your image and also in using the image with the height and width request. Always be aware of copyright. You want to use public domain images or those that are Creative Commons licensed. And even with the Creative Commons license, make sure that since there are various CC licenses, make sure that you're using an image that is pertinent for how you want to use it. So some Creative Commons license restrict commercial use. Most of them do ask for an attribution requirement of the original author or photographer or artist. There are a lot of sources these days to find images that you can use. They're either public domain or Creative Commons. I give you a bunch of sources here. And then the last one there is, is a vectored one. The others are all bitmaps. Again, pay attention to the license and the attribution requirements and you might need to go into Photoshop and add uh, some text as far as giving attribution or add that as a separate label. If you're using your own photographs and you take photographs of people, make sure you get a, a model release of the person that you're taking the picture of. And you can find model release forms on the internet. In the old days of Xamarin, and even if you've taken our Kotlin Android Studio course or our iOS Swift course, you're aware that we have, we've had to create different resolutions of images. So in Android, traditionally we've created five different resolutions and stored those in different folders called Drawable, Drawable HDPI, Drawable X HDPI, Drawable Double X HDPI, and Drawable Triple X HDPI. On the iOS side, we created three versions and they were named at 1X, at 2X, and at 3X. And on the Windows side, we also created three versions and named those dot .scale-100, scale dot .scale-200, and dot .scale-400 at the end of each file name. Well, I'm happy to report that we no longer have to do that in .NET MAUI. We can just give the largest file size and it will resize the images to the platform and to the device that we are sending the app to. That makes life so much easier. But I want to demonstrate that size is really important because you want to make sure you start with a large size and scaling down and not something small and scaling up. Because if we go small and scale up, it's going to get very blurry and rasterized. So I built a little project in Visual Studio to demonstrate that. I'm in Visual Studio on the PC. I've created a project called Image Resolution Demo. And I brought in three different versions of a photo of Abraham Lincoln. One is sized at a width of 100 and a height of 129. The next one is the same image, but it's 300 pixels wide by 387 high. And then finally, 600 pixels wide by 773 pixels high. I wanna display those three different images, both at 300 device units wide and 100 device units wide. Let's take a look at the application. So here's the project running in a S, Samsung S20 emulator. The first image here is Lincoln at 300 pixels wide. Now I'm displaying it at 300 DIU or device independent units wide. Looks great. And then I scale it down to 100, still looks really good. So it scales down perfectly. Then I took the 100 pixel image and displayed it at 300 DIU. And notice how blurry 
and rasterize it is in comparison to the original at 300. But at 100, it looks great. So if you know the size of, of the image you want to use as far as DIU, you can make your pixel resolution about the same. It's going to look good. Now, I recommend, if you want to put this on a tablet that might be 600 DIU, the 300 is not going to look very good. So I recommend if you're making this for different platforms and for different types of devices, go as large as you can. Uh, within reason, you don't want to make your files so large they take a lot of space, but 600 pixel width will work really well on both tablets and phones for the most part. Here's the 600 by 773 image displayed at 300 DIU and then 100 DIU. And you can see it looks great. So I didn't really need the 100 and the 300. I could have just got the 600. It was great on this phone. It would also look good on say a Kindle Fire tablet or a Samsung Tab tablet or an iPad. If you just jumped into this video, you can see all the videos from the .NET My Practicum playlist by clicking on the image in the lower right. And if you'd like to be alerted to future videos I create, you can click my picture in the top right to subscribe to the channel.